The Agony of Midlife Crisis Do you know why many people above the age of 40 starts acting cranky, lose interest in life, feel depressed, lost in thought, irritable, impulsive, etc? Hmm, I am not sure. But I do see such people in my family, friends, co-workers, etc. Is it due to stress? Partially. But their weird situation is actually called midlife crisis. Midlife crisis? What's that? A midlife crisis is a loss of self-confidence, anxiety, or disappointment that can occur in early middle age slowly starting around 40 years. The term, midlife crisis, was first introduced by Elliot Jack, a Canadian psychoanalyst, and later made popular by psychologists like Carl Jung. It is described as a period during the lifespan when people transition from young people to older adults. During this time, they start to evaluate their achievements, goals, dreams, failures, etc. It's basically a time when people take stock of themselves, their purpose and meaning, etc. And depending on their success or failure till now this period can be very chaotic for many individuals. The various ways midlife crisis impacts people are as follows. They lose interest and enthusiasm for everything, even the ones they were interested in before like songs or movies. They experience a feeling of hopelessness and being stuck in a rut. Many of these adults think they have few or no options for their future and feel there is no purpose in their lives. People experiencing midlife crises feel angry, embarrassed, and dejected at not being able to fulfill many of the desires they had when they were young. Secondly, they are unable to disclose this with their family members or friends for fear of being ridiculed. This can torture them day and night as the days pass. People experiencing midlife crises can also exhibit impulsive behaviors and may make bad financial decisions. They also do not want to acknowledge that their youth years are over. For example, a person I knew who was 50 plus suddenly bought a sports bike to impress his family and friends that he was still strong and injured himself badly. They do such foolish things in the hope of recapturing their childhood as acquiring sports bikes or cars symbolizes success and youth. They start comparing their lives with those who are more successful than them for the same effort. For example, they may now become jealous of friends who got promotions and better things in life, while they could not rise in spite of being better or more hardworking than them. This jealousy can result in friendships and relations getting spoiled. They experience changes in sleep patterns. Symptoms of a midlife crisis include inability to sleep or oversleeping as the mind will be overworking to make sense of the mind and body changes that are happening. They may even start taking drugs, alcohol, affairs, take risks with their careers, or quit jobs seeking some adventure, and so on. They also experience frightful thoughts of death and dying. They begin to think about their own impending mortality. This can lead to depression and fear. 
It's not just ordinary people who experience a midlife crisis. Even top celebrities and successful people in all fields also experience this wretched midlife crisis depending on what they didn't achieve in life. This is why we see shocking news about former celebrities suddenly committing suicide or becoming drug addicts. In summary, a midlife crisis is a stage when a person's mind, body, and soul become fragile causing various painful disturbances. How to handle midlife crisis? The first step to handling this crisis is to realize that you are undergoing a midlife crisis. But too many people don't know that they are caught in this trap. For example, you easily know that you will sneeze and cough when you get a cold, or your stomach gets upset due to indigestion or overeating. In a similar way, you should know and accept that you will experience such mental disturbances and gloominess when you are undergoing a midlife crisis. Once you realize this, you can start taking some action to eliminate or reduce this. If you do not take any action, you can get into a hopeless spiral and make your and your family's life worse. Here are a few suggestions to handle a midlife crisis. Method 1. Live one day at a time. The simple magic formula of learning to live one day at a time can be practiced by almost anyone to switch off anxiety and lead a happy life without worrying or imagining a scary future. This means forcing yourself to live for the moment rather than waiting for some future goal that will make you happy. It's about enjoying where you are now with what you have. It's a mindset you need to cultivate. It may take some time to perfect this art, but eventually, you will get there. Just give it a careful thought and you will begin to see its light. It's not a new concept either and has been successfully used by many great people over the ages. Sir William Osler, a professor of medicine in John Hopkins School of Medicine preached this concept of living in day-tight compartments, which is based on the saying, our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand, by Thomas Carlyle. He taught everyone to forget the dead yesterday and the unborn tomorrow. Instead, you just concentrate on doing your best on what is to be done today and the future will take care of itself. Now you may argue that you don't or can't look at life one day at a time. Or that life does not work this way. However, this method does not mean you become a saint, give up all desires, or there is no need to effectively prepare for the future. It only means the future should be taken care by doing the right things today. What you do today determines what you can or cannot do tomorrow. Don't waste a good Sunday worrying about the impending Monday. Learning to live one day at a time can shut off a lot of unnecessary stress from troubling you. If you want to become stress-free, you must switch off the past and future from haunting you. Even if you are faced with terrible problems, to begin with, postpone your pressing worry by about three hours, then by three more hours, and so on. In the meanwhile, think about possible solutions to eliminate the worry or how to solve the problem. Drag yourself from the worry by starting to do something else. 
Keep yourself busy and you will notice that the grinding worry would have paused during the time you were doing something. Concentrate your efforts on how to eliminate the problem you are anticipating. Cross the river when you get to the bridge. Let your grinding worry actually knock on your door to tackle it. Do everything in your power today to see that the trouble does not knock on your door or force its way inside tomorrow. In most cases, it may never knock on your door. Nor do you need to open the door for every trouble. Method 2. Have a lifelong hobby. Now one of the best techniques to forget about your midlife crisis is to cultivate a good and everlasting hobby. Hobbies can eliminate your stress, loneliness, and its associated depression. Individuals who are involved with some hobby are usually much happier than people who do not have any hobby. Having a hobby can create that much needed diversion from constantly brooding about your midlife crisis. Now which hobby to choose? If you were young you could have chosen sports or adventures. But you cannot do that after you cross 40 years. So, you should choose hobbies suitable for your age. For example, writing and publishing books or blogs is one such good and everlasting hobby that can give the much needed distraction from your agony. Unlike sports, writing is a hobby that you can continue even after you become old. With sports, you will have to stop by the age of 30 or 35, but with writing you can do it even at the age of 80 if you are capable. Similarly, you can choose other hobbies like mild gardening, coaching, training, learning a new language, attending speeches, etc. Once you get involved in a hobby your mind won't have time to worry about your midlife crisis. Remember, only an idle mind is a devil's workshop that takes you on scary imaginary trips. Method 3. The Four Stages of Life This is a concept in Hinduism where our wise ancestors have divided life into four stages. Life is an unpredictable and often wicked game designed by nature. We cannot opt out of it. So, our wise ancestors devised a method by which we can somehow accept and endure it rather than brood and torture ourselves. The four stages as defined in Hinduism are as follows. First stage, this is called Brahmacharya or a student stage of life that prepares one for success in later stages of life. This stage lasts until 25 years of age. Second stage, this is called Grihastha or the householder stage, 25 to 50 years. This involves concentrating on maintaining a home, having a family, household responsibilities, etc. This stage lasts until 50 years of age. Third stage, this is called Vanaprashta and begins after individuals fulfill their obligations to their families, 50 to 75 years. Upon reaching this stage, people should start detaching themselves from family life and pursuit of material things to devote more of their time to spirituality, and seek solace, knowledge, peace, and freedom. This is also the time to give back to the community till your strength lasts. 
fourth stage this stage is sannyasa or complete renunciation after 75 years at this stage a person is supposed to be totally devoted to God with no interest in the home and material possessions. This is the time to renounce all desires, fears, hopes, duties, and responsibilities. As you can see from the above these four stages gives a structure to your life and a method to accept the unpredictable game called life and its responsibilities at each age without torturing yourself. Remember, millions of your forefathers have also faced the same problem in their lives. And one more thing to note is that friends and relatives you are dealing with may also be facing a midlife crisis. Now let us listen to some famous quotes. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. Thomas Carlyle. What were you worried about this time last year? Can't remember unknown. He who fears what he may suffer, already suffers what he fears, old proverb. Each day comes bearing its own gifts. Untie the ribbons, Ruth and Shabaka. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday, author unknown. My life has been full of terrible misfortunes most of which never happened. Michel de Montaigne. I've seen many troubles in my time, half of which never came true. Mark Twain. As soon as we stop worrying, a solution pops up. David de Notaris. Rather than sitting and worrying, do something, anything. Worrying is a waste of time, Catherine Pulsifer. Drag your thoughts away from your troubles, by the ears, by the heels, or any other way you can manage it, Mark Twain. That's all folks, thanks for watching.